Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Hope you're doing great. My name is Anna and today I'm going to be talking to you about everything that I knit for myself for the most part in 2022. So this is my 2022 wrapped. I'll talk to you all about the things that I knit and show you them, how they've worn, how I would have, how I modified them or now after wearing them, how I should have modified them, things like that. Um, so to start off the video, I'm going to do a little quick voiceover with just like the stats of everything that I knit this year, and then we'll get rolling. Okay, so welcome to my 2022 knitting wrapped. I'm just going to walk you through some quick stats about the projects that I worked on this year. In 2022, I completed 38 knitting projects, um, and the breakdown of that is nine sweaters, four tops, two vests, one dress, 12 accessories, and eight gifts. Um, of those 38 projects, I would say four are complete fails. Um, they're either frog, getting frogged or given away or just things that I'm not going to use. Um, I won't even touch on all of them in this video because I have not touched them since I bound them off. Um, 11 of the projects are pretty good and I wear them and like them, but there are a few, a few things I would change or would have changed. Uh, and then 23 of the projects I really like just as they are. I'm really happy with the product um, and they may not be perfect, but they work great for me. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on were the, my most knit designers. Um, so I knit two patterns from Ann Vensel. They were both sweaters. I knit two patterns from Petite Knit, one sweater and one accessory. I knit three patterns from Sorry Nordland, two sweaters and one accessory. And I knit four patterns from Sundas Garn, a dress, a vest and two sweaters. So that's just a quick look at my year in numbers. Okay, so we are gonna go in chronological order from completion date. My first finished object of 2022, I finished on New Year's Day. Um, so I knit mostly in 2021. Um, and that is my Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. So this is what she looks like. I'll put everything in cutaway so you can see. Um, I really, really like this cardigan. I like the fit of it. Um, the one thing I will say about Ozetta's patterns is that she lists um, row counts and measurements for everything. And I would say, if you're like me and you don't pay as much attention to row gauge, pay attention to the measurements because the sleeves on this, um, if I had knit to the row gauge recommended, they would have been too long. So like I've knit the first three sleeve decreases um, at the spacing that she listed in the pattern. And then after that, I had to decrease the spacing a little bit so that they wouldn't be too long. Um, and they're still even a little bit too long because this is half fisherman's rib, it grows. And this was my first time knitting half fisherman's rib. Um, so they grew a little bit more, but it is does have that like super comfy, slouchy, oversized cardigan feel. And I really like it. The one thing that I'm really upset about is that this yarn does not hold up well. So I'm gonna do a close up so you can see, but there is just so much pilling on this yarn and it's impossible to ever get it to look not pilled. Like it just always is pilling. Now this is a 100% merino yarn from Patton's. It's the Patton's classic wool merino, which is no longer, it's, an, um, it's a discontinued yarn. I bought this for super cheap. I think I got all the yarn for this sweater for $10. Um, like it was very affordable. And it's so soft, but it just pills so badly. And I think the reason, part of the reason that it pills so badly is that the stitches are long. So like in Half Fisherman's Rib, you knit into the stitch below. So these rib stitches are extra long. So there's just more of the fiber exposed. Um, it's not like held together as closely in the stitch. Um, and so I think that contributes to a lot of the pilling. So I love this sweater, but I don't wear it super often because it always looks a little scruffy. Like it always looks... I just feel like I look unkempt when I'm wearing it because it's always pilling and no matter how many pills I pick off there are always more and if I shave it with the with a deep piller there's still more pills that it doesn't catch and if I pick like if I shave it with a razor there's still more pills that it doesn't catch and it's just like impossible to get it to look crisp and clean so that's pretty disappointing obviously I wouldn't know with that yarn again even if I found it like secondhand or something and you can't buy it new so it's not as much of an issue but if you do have it in stash or if you come across it um be forewarned that maybe it's not the best for like a looser gauge sweater. So that was my first sweater of the year. I love the pattern. I would definitely knit the pattern again. I really like it. Um, but the yarn was a big letdown on that one for me. Okay, my second sweater of the year 
was my Badger in Bloom by Ann Bensel. And I really, really like this sweater. Um, I knit mine in Let Lopey and had some gauge issues. I learned my lesson this year about swatching, that it is important and that you should do it because I started knitting this sweater and knit like the whole yoke and a whole sleeve and like the gauge was way too tight and it wasn't gonna fit with the amount of ease that I wanted. So I ended up having to rip it back and re-knit it and I tried to knit it with mohair and that didn't work great. So it was like a really big adventurous <laughs> struggle. But once I finally got the gauge right, I think I knit this in like 10 days. I was really enjoyed knitting this. The color work on the yoke is gorgeous. It's super simple. This would be a really good first color work project. Um, and then the stockinette sections aren't super long and this is knit at a 16 stitch gauge, so it's quite loose so it goes super quickly. Um, I will say that I've knit, I've probably only knit two or three circular yokes but this is the best fitting circular yoke sweater that I've ever tried. I think I've knit three. This was my third circular yoke and this is definitely by far and away the best fitting circular yoke I've ever tried. I love the way it fits me. Um, I will say I knit the Badger in Bloom unisex pattern which is um, has a little bit more positive ease. It has also instructions for making this in a, in a more masculine size, like to fit more masculine bodies. Um, and the sizes go a little bit larger because I know Ann Wetzel is not great about her size range. But there is a little bit more room if you go for the Badger and Bloom unisex. So really pleased with this. I mean, there's some places where my color work is not the best. This is on the back and you can kind of see like some of the white stitches, especially like in here are kind of stretched. Um, but that comes from like knitting a yarn at a relatively loose gauge and I don't think it looks bad. I don't think it's really noticeable. I really only notice if I'm like hanging it here looking at me. If I'm wearing it, I don't really notice it at all. Um, and I did actually sew a little tag into this. I bought these last year and I think they're really cute. Yeah. So I love this sweater. I love the fit of it. The Let Lopey is rustic and I will say like I wore this just a couple days ago and I had to wear a t-shirt under it and there were times where I could feel it I was wearing a short sleeve t-shirt under it and I could feel it on my arms and it was like a little bit irritating but I think that Let Lopey is a magical yarn either way and I'll get to more I'll speak more about it later because I've knit a couple other projects with it and if you are interested in Let Lopey I would definitely recommend trying it out so yes this is my Badger and Bloom I really love it um I love the fit. I don't know that I would knit it again because it's quite a statement piece, the color work. Maybe I would knit it for like somebody else. I would knit it as a gift, but I'm really happy to have this in my wardrobe and I really do like wearing it. It's great for really cold winter time. All right, the next project that I finished, which is, is this little hat. So this is probably my favorite hat I've ever made. And you can tell because it's like quite stretched out. I need to reblock it. Um, it's like very triangular. <laughs> But this is kind of an improvised hat. It's based off a pattern from Llama Lovejoy. It's like the folded rib or folded brim beanie. It's a free pattern um, that I will link down below for you. I'll link all the patterns and all the yarns that are linkable for you down below. But it's based on that, but I ended up doing, I had to knit this hat a couple of times. Like I ripped it out and redid it a few times because I was trying to get the stitch counts right. I have it in the notes of my Ravelry page, but I think I ended up doing 64 stitches. I'll even look for you. Did 64 stitches on a six millimeter needle for this hat. So this is a worsted weight yarn held with kind of like a sport weight fuzzy yarn. Um, the base yarn, which is a pink 100% wool, it's like a DK to worsted, is Busilla Tapestry Wool, which is also a discontinued yarn, but I do really like working with it. Whenever I find it, I buy it because it's a good workhorse yarn. It doesn't pill. It is not super rustic, but it's 100% wool and it's like toothy but not rustic, not itchy, so I really like this yarn. Um, and then the fuzzy yarn I bought on a cone at a creative reuse craft store in California when I was shopping with my mom. It's a similar color but not identical, so it makes this really pretty kind of marly color. The only thing was I knit this, this is why I had to rip it out, because I knit it the first time the whole thing with the mohair and then when I did the folded brim it was way too scratchy on my forehead. It's like the one part of my body that I'm pretty sensitive is like right here, so I have to be careful with how I, what I used to knit hats. So what I ended up doing was I held this rainbowy, this is an 100% alpaca yarn that my mother-in-law gave me and I've used it for a couple projects and just had a little bit left. So I think I held it double or maybe even triple to do the inside of the brim just because it's so soft. Um, and then I didn't quite have enough of it. So this is like a cashmere almost, this white. And then I just left a little bit of that pink so that you couldn't see the, the different color on the inside. Um, and that's what happened. So 
I will say there's a very long end inside this hat that I just kind of tucked in and doesn't bother me but I love this hat I love the fit of it it's snug but not tight I like the amount of slouchiness that it has um I really like it so I will link the pattern that I based it off of for you and my Ravelry project page down below for you to look at but I just really like this hat I think the folded double brim is my favorite kind of hat it looks the best on me I would say and you don't have to worry about like fiddling with the folded brim on your own I don't know I just really like the folded knitted down brim on a hat so that was my third project of the year next up we have my balaclava okay so I don't know if you all remember but last winter balaclavas were really trendy and when I was knitting my seasons cardigan I had 500 grams of yarn and I, it was a discontinued yarn and I was like running pretty low on the yarn. And then I went to this store in California with my mom that had the like, it's a, it, it's a really cool store. It's called Slow Fiber. It's in Monterey, California. Um, and they sell, she sells like fabric stuff and brand new yarn, but she also like buys people's D stashes and then resells them in her store. And they had like three or four or five skeins of the exact yarn that I needed. And it was like so serendipitous. I didn't buy all of it, I bought I think two more balls. So I ended up having 700 grams of yarn to finish this cardigan. And I think I ended up needing like 550. So I had like a ball and a half of that same merino left and I decided to use it to make this balaclava. So I will say that the yarn has worn much better in this balaclava than it did in this sweater, which makes me think that it was the stitch pattern that caused so much pilling. Cause I think this is knit on like a four millimeter needle and it looks totally fine. Like the yarn is not, it doesn't really show anywhere. Granted I don't, wear this very often but like it looks really nice um so I'll, I put a cutaway in of me wearing it but I think it <laughs> I don't wear it very often I think it's kind of goofy I have a hard time styling it I feel like it like my husband told me I looked like I was wearing like a knight when I was wearing it like it was a knight's hood and I, now I feel self-conscious <laughs> wearing it and I just find it hard to style but so I'm not sure if it's like the construction of this. So for this balaclava, there, I've seen several ways to do balaclavas. For this one, you knit the top portion and then you put the stitches on hold and you pick up around and then knit the rest of the way. So it almost has this kind of like square shape to it, but not, I'm just not sure that it's the right style for me because of the way that the seams kind of like hang on the side of my head. So I've undecided if I want to rip this out and re-knit a different balaclava, but one that is like seamed at the top. I do think those have a little bit better of a look that they kind of almost have a point at the back. I don't know. I feel like that might look better on me. I'm just undecided. Maybe I'm just not a balaclava girl. It may also be the ribbing around the, the face is a bit too small. I'm not really sure. I like this. I like the idea of it and I like the way it looks when I'm like when I have it under a coat and it's not on my head when it's like sitting back like a hood. I think it looks really cute. But actual practicality of this, um, yeah. Maybe I will wear it when I go skiing this year. Seems like a good use for a balaclava because it would fit really nicely. I have worn this actually when I'm biking. It fits well under my bike helmet. So, you know, to each their own on the balaclava. It also may just be that the face opening is too big. I don't know. So I'm undecided what to do with this, but... I did make it and it's fun. So it was a fun and quick and easy project. So that's my little balaclava. The next thing I made was the this vest or slipover, which I kind of improvised, well, based off of a couple different patterns. So I call it the slate slipover just because it's gray um, and it's just a basic vest with cables on it. The cable design comes from a drops pattern and then the kind of construction technique comes from the holiday slipover from Petite Knit but the stitch counts are different um, and there are some different details about it. So it has just the three main cables. It's knit top down um, and it fits well. I think it needed to be a little bit wider at the top um, and the armhole increases are a little bit too big. Like I think I didn't need to increase out as much as I did, but overall it's fine. Like I, I wore it quite a lot actually when I first finished it. I wore it in the springtime a lot. Um, I haven't worn it much in the winter, but I, when I was putting it on for this video, I was like, oh no, this is still cute. Like I do still like it. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about this. I have quite a lot of this yarn left. It's a, this is made from the K plus C Crafts roving yarn, which comes from Joanne. It's like their house brand. 
And for a roving yarn, like it's worn pretty well. I don't think I've ever depilled this. Um, and there's like a tiny bit of pilling, but all in all, I think it looks pretty good. Um, maybe like on the hem a little bit, but all things considered, I think it looks pretty good. So I should just wear this more. The only other thing is that the neckline is a little tight. That's the other one thing. I think I should have done the neckline a little deeper, but all things considered for an improvised pattern, I think it's pretty cute and fun. So that's my little slate slip over. It's very cute and fun and I need to wear it more. Um, cool. My next finished object was what I'm wearing right now. This is my Honko from Sorry Nordland, which I knit in February, I want to say. I bought the pattern in October when it came out and then sat on it for a while. I was deciding on the perfect yarn for it and then I decided that this is what I wanted to do. So this is knit in like a cashmere. It's a reclaimed cashmere, this periwinkle color. The green is also a reclaimed cashmere and then the white is one strand of 100% alpaca and one strand of wool mohair blend. Um, the 100% alpaca was reclaimed and then the wool mohair blend I got from Color Mart. Um, but yeah, this is a cute, really cute little pattern from Sorry Nordland and I'll put the cutaway so you can see. It's a little more cropped in the arms and the body than I normally do, but I used up like every last drop of the yarn that I had um, because I think the sweater that it came from was an extra small. It's one that my mom gave to me that she had bought to um, pull apart and then never got around to. So the sleeves are definitely more of a bracelet length on me, which is fine. It's just not my preferred length. I really like, I mean, you can see they're like quite short. And as I move the arm, it kind of shrinks up. I think I prefer a sleeve that's like past this bumpy bone in my wrist. Like I think I would like it maybe slightly more if the sleeve was just like right here. And I can always block it again to try and pull some more length into it. But I do also like the width of the sleeves in this they're like there is ease in them but they're not tight and I think if I blocked it more they might get a little bit tighter so yeah I mean this is like pretty much knit to the pattern um it's meant to be cropped like that I do think that the detail on the um gosh what is this called Italian bind off is really cute how you do it in the stripe colors I like that a lot um the only thing that I did modify is that I think in the pattern you do another set of the stockinette before you do the cuff. And I ended up just knitting the cuff the same length as I would do one of these. So it almost blends a little bit more. I also really like the shoulder construction on this. It is a, it's kind of a drop shoulder, but you knit the collar um, in the round and then you do this, in, you do the increases for the front and back um, on either side of the stitch. So you knit the front and back and the round until here. You knit like almost this whole top section. I don't know how to show you. Like all across here you knit in the round, increasing, and then you split for front and back. Um, and then you knit this drop on the sleeve, flat, and then you rejoin. Um, I don't find the sleeve holes on this to be too small, probably because the body is a little bit more fitted. I don't know, I just really do like the fit of this sweater. And I don't wear it that often, and I think it's because it doesn't go well with jeans, like blue jeans, because it's this periwinkle color. Um, so I have a hard time wearing it with jeans, but I have recently made myself, ugh, you're not gonna be able to see. I have recently made myself a pair of white Persephone pants from Anna Allen, it's a pattern from Anna Allen that I am really obsessed with, I love these pants. And now I have something to wear them with, so. You're not gonna be able to see my outfit of the day, but if I wear them with these white pants, I think it's really cute. So, I could also wear them with black jeans, but I don't wear black jeans that often. So, it's just finding something to wear it with, but I think now that I have these pants, I'll wear it more often. Um, but yeah, I really like this pattern. I think it's great, and I don't see a lot of people making it, but it's quite lovely, so I would highly recommend. All right, my next finished object were these little vanilla socks that I made. These are like a DK weight sock that I made out of some Boosilla tapestry wool, which is the yarn I really like. It's the same that I knit the hat out of. Um, and these are improvised as well. They're top down, but they have a shaped common heel, which is a different heel construction for me. In 2021, I bought a book about sock construction, um, and I kind of want to test out a a few of the different I wanted to test out some of the different sock constructions and this is one of them where you kind of knit the heel flap straight and then you do some decreases and then Kitchener it together at the bottom and then pick up and knit a gusset like you normally would. This is the way that Inga from Knitting Traditions does her heels. They're really lovely. If you want to learn how to do it she has a couple patterns that use this kind of heel construction. 
Um, and I think they're great. And I do actually wear these in my boots, even though they are 100% wool. And you can see that on the heel, if it will focus, there is a lot of felting. Um, but that actually doesn't bother me. I, I don't mind felting in my socks because I feel like the felting makes it stronger in a no, no nylon sock because the fibers are stuck together now and they're like really thick and they're not going to stretch. So I feel like I'm less likely to get holes in a felted pair of socks. So I'm not afraid of felted socks. But yeah, that's my little Busilla socks. I really like these. I like the fit of them. It took me a while to get them right. Um, I have a hard time with top down socks about making the foot long enough because I'm tired of knitting the foot and I just want them to be done. So I had to rip back and re-knit the foot on this a couple times to get it to the right length, but now they fit really nicely. And they're pretty short, which I actually don't mind a shorter leg. It like just hits the top of the boots that I usually wear. Um, and all in all, I think they're really cute. So they're just a plain vanilla sock, but I've worn them a lot. They're very cozy. And yeah, I think I did 48 stitches on this. Actually, I could count for you. They're like a 44 stitch, maybe 42, 44. I don't know, but they fit great. Really pleased with those. So that's my first pair of socks of the year. Next up, I knit this little hat. This is a hat knit out of a 100% camel yarn that I bought from Color Mart. And I bought this to, knit, to match a shawl that I had knit the previous year in a camel yarn. And that shawl is knit from a camel yarn that is reclaimed from a sweater and it's extremely soft. So I bought this expecting it to be super soft like that other yarn and it's not. It's not quite as soft. It was also marketed as like a worsted weight and it's definitely not. It's more of like a fingering weight. Maybe it was a DK but it's quite thin, the yarn. The yarn is quite thin so I ended up having to hold it double for this. So I used another pattern. I didn't follow completely but I will find the pattern that this is based off of. I really like the increases at the top or the decreases at the top. So that's why I chose this pattern. The stitch counts are different, um, but it turned out cute. I wouldn't say that I wear this a ton because I think it's a little bit small for me. It's like very, it's got quite a lot of negative ease on my head. And I think I wish it was just a little bit longer so that this um, cuff could be longer. I like a cuff on my hats that's like at least three inches long, frankly. Um, and I think this is just a little snug, but it is cute, nice beige. And now that my hair is quite a bit darker than it was months ago, I think it looks good. So yeah, that's my little camel hat. My second hat of the year, pretty basic, two by two rib, but turned out good. And I wear it occasionally. Um, all right, the next thing I have to show you is my Vima pullover, which is a test knit I did for Sorry Nordland. And I knit this in Cascade 220. Um, you'll see it in the cutaway. I am torn on this sweater. I really enjoyed knitting it. I think I've only worn it maybe once or twice. There's just something about the fit of it that is not quite right. I don't know what it is, but it's just not quite right. I think the, I think the cable panel is too narrow for me. I mean, they're such pretty cables and the closer you look at it, the more like interesting it is. So you have the the big cables, but on the big cables, there are little cables, like, and I don't think this was the right yarn for this project, honestly. It's worsted spun, so it's a little bit too flat, but you can see, like, on one leg of these big cables is more cables, and I'm just not sure that it's popping in this yarn. So I really enjoyed doing this, and I like testing for Sari. She's great. I've tested for her. I think maybe this is the only time I've tested for her. Maybe twice, but I really like testing for her. Um, I also think I just did the bind off at the bottom a little bit too tight because it just doesn't have as nearly as much stretch as the body. Like the body stretches a ton and the bind off does not. And I think that also contributes to the way that it hangs on my body. So I'm undecided if I should keep this sweater or if I should frog it and use the yarn for something else because I do really like the yarn. It's Cascade 220 in the color like Chelan Heather. This like greeny, bluey, yellowy Heather that is like really quite close to the color of my eyes. Um, and I think it's gorgeous and I'm not wearing it. So I wonder if I should, um, use this yarn for something else or if I should just sell this sweater to kind of recoup the cost of the yarn, buy the yarn again and knitting again. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I also put it on to do the cutaways for this video and I was like, oh, this isn't so bad. So maybe I just, again, it was a problem of not having the right pants to wear because it is kind of a blue that makes it hard to wear with jeans. So maybe I could try it with these white pants again and try that.
Editing Anna here. I'm looking at this cutaway and I can see that there's a mistake in the cables on the front of my sweater and I will never be able to unsee it again. So I think this sweater is going to have to get ripped out. I'll consider it. I'll try wearing it one more time before I decide to frog it, but it's not the pattern's fault. I think it just wasn't, or not meant to be. All right, the next sweater I finished is the Eros sweater by Petite Knit. This is one of her less common or less popular, less well-known patterns. I think it's from when she was, it's one of her older patterns. Um, and I think it's really, really incredible. This is one of the best fitting sweaters I've ever made. Um, I think it's because it has this really interesting, it's kind of like a saddle shoulder, but I, I guess I would consider it a saddle shoulder, but the other saddle shoulders I've knit have been so that you could have a decorative panel running down the arm, whereas this one, I think it's just for the fit. A saddle shoulder just fits really nicely because it's shaped to fit nicely across your shoulders and then across your body. And I think that having the increases at a different rate just like makes the fabric fall really nicely. Like you can see, so when you're knitting a saddle shoulder, you increase for the shoulders first. So like you're increasing to make this kind of section of this triangle of fabric right here. And then you start doing like what would be normal raglan increases. So you get this kind of almost like triangular, you can kind of see the way that the stripes go out. This almost like triangular shoulder that just fits really well over the shoulder. It looks incredible. It's a little bit more of a fitted shape than I would normally go for, but I think it's just really nice. And another reason why I chose this for stripes was because I like that the way that the stripes look straight. So like if you're doing a raglan with stripes, the stripes kind of come out at like a jagged angle, but where if you're wearing this, they kind of, because of the way that those increases are done, they just kind of come across. And like right here, maybe a little bit you can see, but I'll put a picture of me wearing it. They just look straight. And I think that looks a lot nicer in a stripe. Like they don't, if this was a raglan, I'm trying to figure out the best way to show you. If this was a raglan, it would be more like that. Whereas it is kind of straight, you see? If it was a raglan, it would be much more angular, like more of a, that square shape. So yeah, this is made with Plotilopi single stranded, which I didn't have a problem knitting Plotilopi single stranded. I think if you want to knit an unspun yarn single stranded, Plotilopi is very easy to do. It's very robust. It does not break easily unless you're like, unless you knit really tightly or you're used to putting a lot of tension on your yarn. Um, but I think it's fine. The only thing is that this again is also kind of scratchy. I also wore this this week and had to wear a t-shirt underneath it and it was scratchy on my arms, but not unbearable. Um, but when I first finished it, it was really fuzzy. Like the guard hairs were out of control. So I actually took, I took hair clippers that I have, that we have in our, in our house that my husband uses for his hair. And I shaved the sweater with the hair clippers to kind of trim down some of those guard hairs. So it doesn't really have a ton of halo to it because I, I cut off the guard hairs. Like you can kind of see up here, I was scared to do it at the top because it's a little bit more delicate. Um, but you can kind of see how there's more of those longer guard hairs up here. Whereas on the body, I kind of got rid of those. So I, I don't regret it, honestly. I think it worked well um, just to make it a little less prickly. I would definitely knit this pattern again, maybe like in a solid as more of like a well-fitting kind of more professional looking sweater. I don't know. I just think it's gorgeous. And honestly, like an underrated pattern. I think this is great. There's also a dress version of this, which I think would be gorgeous. Although I'm not sure that I'm up to knit another dress anytime soon because as you'll see shortly, I knit one this year and it might be another little while before I get up the strength to knit another one. So yeah, that's my Aro sweater. It's gorgeous. I love it. It's so cute. Um, the color palette is very me, very like earth tony neutral. These were all leftovers and worked out great. I had plenty. I had less than one plate of each of the colors and I still had leftovers again after I finished this sweater. So very pleased with this. Okay, next up are my most favorite socks of all time ever. These are the greatest, the greatest piece of footwear I've ever owned. These are my Let Lopi socks. And I just gotta tell you, I'm obsessed with these. I will not stop evangelizing them. I love them. They're so soft. They are so warm. They are so comfortable. They don't prickle. They do not prickle. I know it prickles like on my upper body when I'm wearing Lopi, but on my feet, I do not notice it because the magical thing about Lopi is that when you're cold, you don't notice the prickle. It just keeps you really warm. If you're like, kind of hot and getting a little bit overheated, then it feels more uncomfortable. But I feel like that's the case for most wool yarns. 
Um, so for but on my feet, I almost never notice it because your feet are always cold in the winter time. And if they're not cold, they're comfortable. They're, they're never really getting like overheated. So yes, I did these based off the basic bed sock pattern, which I will link for you down below. The toe up sock with just like kind of a wedge toe, you do knit front back increases, and then I just knit the foot. I did a lovely short row heel, um, which turned out great, and then just the short little leg, and it, I was off to the races. These, the only thing about these is that they're a little bit loose. Um, these are 48 stitches, and I think I should have done 44 for me but they're very cozy house socks. I don't wear these in shoes because they're a little bit too thick to wear in my boots. I think they, they like wouldn't be enough room in my shoe with these thick socks, but I love them. I wear them constantly. Should probably wash them. Don't, I maybe have washed them once since I made them in like March or April and haven't washed them again. So I should probably wash those. I'm gonna actually make myself a little wash pile here. They've pilled a little bit, but I'm almost wondering, you can kind of see some fuzzies on here. I don't know if that's the yarn pilling or if it's the socks picking up like dirt off of my floor. It's probably the yarn pilling, but it's really not that bad. I don't know, I'm obsessed with these. Please make yourself a pair of these. Do yourself a favor, you deserve it. Um, if you want more of a specific pattern for so socks made of lopi, Ozetta has several pairs um, that are gorgeous. She also has pairs that are like held with silk mohair to get very luxurious. I might try a pair of those, so. Please, if you could take nothing else from this video, knit a pair of Lopi socks. Just do it for yourself, you deserve it. Cool, all right. Next up is my sweater number 11, which I am happy with. So I first knit this, this is knit, sweater number 11 by My Favorite Things Knit, knit Wear. Knit in some reclaimed yarn. It's like a cashmere wool alpaca nylon blend. Very luxurious, very, very warm. I cannot wear this sweater in the spring, this is a winter sweater for me, I have learned. It's very warm. Um, it's a drop shoulder construction with twisted rib details. I made quite a few modifications. Well, I made some modifications to this. Um, I didn't want the long, the original pattern has like a big chunky turtleneck. Didn't want that. So um, I knit it just single folded after trial and error. I knit this pattern in April or May and then I made some modifications to it in October because it wasn't fitting right. So I originally had picked up the number of stitches listed in the pattern and it was too many. I did a folded over collar. It was too bulky. It didn't look right. So I ended up having to rip the collar out um, and pick up fewer stitches for the collar. And it, I just did it single folded with a um, Italian mind off and now it sits really nicely and fits well. Um, I also had to add some length to the arms to make it to the length that I like, which is about here on my hand, like below the knuckles. Um, and it's also in fully twisted rib. I talk more about the modifications I made to this in my November video, I want to say. Um, but I do like this kind of line on the shoulders. I think it's really pretty. The only thing now that I dislike about this sweater is that I still think the arms are too tight. Like the armholes are too small. But I just can't be bothered to like rip back the whole body, make the armholes longer, and redo all the sleeves and everything. It would just take too long. So I'm happy with it. It's comfortable. It's warm. It's cute. Um, and I do wear it. So yeah, that's my sweater number 11 from My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is a good pattern. It's not very size inclusive. There's only three sizes. Granted, it has a lot of positive ease, but Petite Knit has some very similar looking patterns and there are plenty other more basic drop shoulder patterns in the world. So if you're worried about size inclusivity, look elsewhere, but yeah. Um, oh, one more thing is that the yarn has held up pretty well on this. The only place I really notice pilling is on the sleeves which is not surprising considering that there's angora and cashmere in here, like it's bound to pill, softer fibers always pill. So um, I haven't had to shave it or anything. It look, generally looks pretty good. All right, next, this is gonna be the longest video of all time. Um, next I knit <coughs> the ballerina wrap top, which I knit in a purple 100% wool yarn. And I ended up giving it to my sister because I did not like the way that it fit on me. I think if I were to knit it again, I would knit it in a larger size, but I only had like 350 grams of the yarn that I used, so I could not knit it in a larger size. And it turned out fine. It didn't really work for me. It wasn't my style. It wasn't just, so I gave it to my sister. I don't even know if she wears it, but it's a nice pattern. I don't know that I would knit it again. It's a free pattern, so there's that if you're looking for like a wrap cardigan, but I wasn't in love with it. So there's a very quick indictment of that. 
All right, the next thing I made was the Rubus Blouse Square Neck, which is a pattern from Refined Knitwear. This pattern is originally knit for two strands of mohair, and I knit it in an unspun wool. So most of the problems I have with the pattern are due to my own yarn choice. But when I first knit it, the sleeves were just way too big. They were like overwhelming the piece, and it was because of the yarn choice. This yarn just does not have the same drape as a mohair would. Um, so I ended up having to go back and re-knit the sleeves. I decreased a ton of stitches out of it, and it fits really nicely now, um, and I'm really happy that I did that. But I do really like this design. I would definitely make another one. Um, I like the yarn. This is the uh, unspun yarn from Briggs and Little in this lovely blue color that's kind of got a heather to it. Really cute. I think it's lovely. Don't have a ton to say about it. The only thing is that I think I would knit it a little longer if I were to knit it again. And instead of doing the eye cord at the bottom, I would do a folded hem to help it hang a little bit better. Um, but again, I think if you were doing this in the mohair, the eye cord might be the way to go. So again, most of the issues with this pattern were due to me being dumb and not knitting with the recommended yarn. So, or just like the recommended type of yarn. It was a good lesson for me. Um, but I do really like it. It turned out really cute and I've worn it quite a few times. No pilling or anything. The white buffalo on your unspun yarn is incredible. If you're looking for something that is less scratchy than lopey, but less delicate than like Newtoden, I think this is a great place to go. This yarn is robust. It does not break easily. Even when you're knitting single stranded, this is knit single stranded. It does not pill. It is amazing. I would, I would and will be knitting more with the, the Briggs and Little Unspun. So that is that. Next up is my Lugenser, which was the beginning of my foray into the Sunness Garn book. Sunness Garn Soft for Women 2202 book, which I knit so much stuff from this year. This is Again, the Lugenser, it's knit in, in two strands of unspun yarn from Hillesvog Ulle Fabrik. Super soft, super lovely. It does pill pretty badly, and it didn't. I didn't notice it until recently um, when I put this on to wear to work, and I was like, ooh, this needs a shave. So it's a pretty soft unspun yarn, so there's a good amount of pilling on here, and it's not super easy to shave because the fibers just, like, Velcro to each other. Um, yeah, she's pilly now that I'm looking at her. But I do like this. The only thing I don't love about this is that I think the sleeves are too wide. It's a deep raglan and you don't do any increases on the sleeve and it's just really wide. Like you can see, um, you can see in the cutaway, like it's quite wide. There's like three inches of fabric below my arm. Um, so I think I, I'm scared to pull this back because the yarn is unspun and I don't want it to fall apart. Um, but I think I would like to make the sleeves slightly more narrow. So maybe if I'm brave one day, I will rip the sleeves back and try and just taper them a little bit so they aren't quite as wide. I'm not sure if I'm brave enough though. I still like it. I wear it a lot. It's very soft. It's very cozy. It's very bougie sweatshirt. Um, and I do really like the raglan detail. I think it's gorgeous with the two stitches, the double ribbing, the mock neck. It's a lovely pattern. Um, I would knit it again. If I needed just like a nice mock neck basic, I would definitely knit that pattern again. So really like the pattern. I love the yarn. It's so soft, it's so wonderful. It's just a little bit delicate. Delicate to knit with, delicate to care for, but to me it's worth it because it's so lightweight and so warm. So I've knit so much unspun this year. I love unspun yarn. I'm not gonna stop talking about it. I know people are annoyed about all the talk about unspun yarn, but I love it. And I'm not gonna stop talking about it because I'm obsessed with it. Okay, next up I knit a pair of socks for my grandma, which were just like a basic top-down vanilla sock. And then I knit these little overalls for my neighbor's baby, which she recently gave back to me because the baby has outgrown them. So she gave it back to me so that I could have it for my babies one day, which was very sweet of her. So this is the most darling. <laughs> They're so cute, these darling little striped overalls. They're based on the pattern called Stripey Baby Dungarees by Becky Smith. Um, and in the pattern, the legs are a little bit longer, but I did them a little bit shorter. They have this folded hem at the bottom. I think these are knit on three millimeter needles or 3.5s, somewhere around there. Um, and then you knit them bottom up and you knit this. They're just so cute. I don't know if I ever got to see a picture of him wearing them, but they're just the cutest little thing. So I'm gonna put them in my bin of things for a baby that I will one day have. Um, and they just are not so cute. And these buttons, these buttons are a bone button that I bought at a creative reuse craft store with my mom. So yeah. Um, oh, also this is the same yarn. 
um, the gray and the green. They're the same yarn. It's 100%. It's a cotton linen blend reclaimed yarn. And I just dyed it with a fiber reactive dye to get the green. And I think it just looks so cute. I love it. I love it so much. It's darling. So yeah, there she is. These little stripy dungarees are so cute. And I just want a little summery baby to put in them. Ugh, they're darling. Okay. Fabulous. All right. My next finished object was more summery. We were moving into the summertime and I made this. This is the Provence top by Ekaterina Boloneva. She makes lovely patterns and I knit this in Drops Paris, which in retrospect was not the right yarn choice. It's just too heavy and not drapey enough for this. And I, again, I don't think I swatched for this, so I think my gauge is a little bit tight. I think if I got up one needle size, I would like this a lot more. But maybe one needle size and one pattern size, or maybe if I had just gone up a needle size, it would have corrected the issue. I just feel like it doesn't quite hang the way that I wanted it to. Um, but it's cute, and I love the lace. I think the lace is gorgeous. I really like the length of the sleeves. So I would give this pattern another try. I just need to pick a better yarn for it. Um, yeah, I think it's nice. I wore it a couple times in the summertime. I will try it and see if I wear, I'll see how much I wear it again this summer. And if I don't wear it a ton, I may either sell it or give it away, but it's quite nice. I just don't wear it a ton. It's really cute. I like the color. Um, but maybe I should try it again in a drapier yarn and maybe a more of a brighter summery color. But yeah, there it is. You even, um, I do like in this pattern that you kind of increase as you're doing the shoulder. So you, it, it falls like it sits close to your body and then kind of falls nicely. The fit on this is really nice. Um, but yeah, it's great. I liked the lace a lot. It was very fun, very easy and very cute. Okay, I'm trying to go fast. Next up is the Giverny blouse, which is a pattern from Knits for Oslo, which I knit kind of on a whim and I don't like it. And I will probably rip it out because I don't like the fit of it. I knit a size too big. I should have knit a smaller size. The color is not really right for this. The yarn is too fuzzy to be a short sleeve summer. It's just like this whole project was doomed from the beginning. It was kind of an impulse cast on and I, I wish I hadn't knit it to be frank. Um, this is knit in a discontinued mohair wool polyamide blend yarn from Penguin. Um, and I've never worn it. Not once. I also think the buttons are wrong. Um, the collar doesn't sit right. There's just a lot of things wrong with this. So I am going to frog this. I just, it was a fail and I'm okay. Like it's fine. Not everything is successful. There's not really a way for me to salvage it and I'm okay with it. I'm just going to rip it out and knit something else with it. Um, I think I might do, uh, James N. Watts has this really pretty brioche pattern that's knit with like a fingering and a mohair, but I might just knit it in just this yarn held single because this is held double, kind of chunky. Um, so yeah, I have thoughts about what to do with it, but I'm going to rip it out because I don't like this. It's just not, it's not right. It's not the best use of this yarn. It just, it doesn't look good. Oh, also... In the pattern pictures, this it has like this beautiful embroidery on the collar. And I expected in the pattern for there to be instructions on how to do the beautiful embroidery on the collar. There are not, there are no instructions. It's just like do some embroidery on the collar and it links you to a video, but there's no like chart for how she did the embroidery on her collar. So I found that very disappointing and very off-putting and I probably will think very hard before I knit another pattern from this designer. So yeah, that was overall quite disappointing, but it didn't like take a lot of time or energy. So it is what it is. I feel like everyone has those kind of projects. All right, in co stark contrast, my next pattern I'm very, very proud of. This is my cherry dress from Sudden Scarn, which is the reason I bought the Sudden Scarn pattern book. I wanted this dress pattern. Um, and it took a very long time to knit and it was not a very fun knit, frankly, because it's just endless stockinette and I don't love knitting stockinette in the round forever but the product is lovely it's a very large very cozy wool cotton blend dress I think the it's 65 35 cotton, wool and cotton I made some modifications to the pattern um, I made the yoke a little bit less deep than the pattern calls for I made the third size but I made the yoke less deep and then when I was splitting for sleeves I just cast on enough stitches to get me back up to the third size. 
And then I did make the sleeves slightly shorter than the body, which is good because I used every last stitch of yarn that I had. And I was more concerned about having the body at the right length than the sleeves. So I'm really happy with the way this fits. It's extremely comfortable. It's a great like lounging around the house dress. I think it'll be really nice in springtime. Um, it felt a little bit, it was too warm for summer. It was a little bit too springy for fall because it's white. Um, so I'm excited to wear this more in the spring. I have worn it and it's really great, but I'm excited to wear it and style it more in spring. Next up I, is another pattern I really, really like. This is the Rib Lace Raglan by James and Watts. Um, I made this with Fidalgo yarn and fibers. Riley and Me yarn, which is a wool, ugh, no, it's a silk alpaca linen blend. Um, it's a yarn that's local to me, a local hand dyer. I bought this at Fiber Fusion Northwest, which is the Washington State Yarn Festival. Um, two skeins of it was plenty, and I made it a little bit longer in the body and in the sleeves than the pattern called for. Um, the pattern calls for a fingering weight yarn for this and I used a DK and I'm glad that I did because it's a little bit more opaque and I don't feel like I need to wear a top underneath this for it to be like appropriate to wear. I've worn it to work um, and it was great. I like the color of this yarn. I think it's the color mocha. I did not alternate skeins which you can kind of tell because there's more variation in the bottom half of the shirt than the top but this was great. I think if you've never knitted lace before this would be a great beginner lace project because it's very simple lace and it's broken up by stockinette. Um, there's no short rows in this, but I actually don't find that it pulls up too high in the front. I think it's because the yarn is so drapey and heavy that it pulls it down to fit nicely. Um, I really like this top. I'm excited to break it back out for summertime, springtime. I think it's so cute and it would actually look great with my white pants that I'm wearing. So yeah, that's that top. Pattern is wonderful. I would definitely knit that again. Maybe the long sleeve version with the bell sleeves could be really fun for more of like a fall wintery version. I like it. That was the first James and Watts pattern I've knit, but I would definitely knit more from him. I think he does really cool and interesting stuff. Very size inclusive and very fun designs. Okay, next up are my most favorite socks that, well, I don't know. It's a tough toss up between these and the Lopey socks, but these are my favorite for their design. Um, these are the Humla Bee socks from Fiber Tales. I love the design. I just think they're the most beautiful little sockies in the whole world. The bumblebees, the lace, the heel, everything, they're perfect. I dyed this yarn myself. It was It's 100% wool yarn. It's made for needlepoint, not for socks, but honestly, all things considered, it's held up really well. It's pilling, you can see here on the heel where it frictions. I mostly wear these in my clogs um, and it does pill a little bit just from the friction. You can kind of see on the foot there, but no holes or anything so far. Um, and just the thing about um, about 100% wool socks, they just kind of gently felt like the fibers mesh together and I feel like it makes them more sturdy. But anyway, I'm obsessed with these. I love the flegal heel. I want to try this again, this construction of heel again, because um, I think it's great. I, I love the, it fits really well in my foot. I love, I just love them. I just think the pattern and the color is perfect together. So these are, these are great. I need to wash these again too, actually. Just throw them on my wash pile. Next up is my Amy slipover. This is another pattern from the Sunness Scar and Pattern Book. It's knit in a strand of reclaimed merino, 100% merino, and one strand of Drops Kid Silk Mohair. I love this pattern. I think it's just so interesting and unique. I don't see a lot of things like this um, and I really like wearing it. It's a great layering piece. I honestly wear it a lot when I'm working from home. Just like I often work from home in like a sweatshirt and sweatpants and I can just throw this on top of my sweatshirt and it keeps me super cozy and warm. Um, I did make a few modifications on this. I made the shoulders a little bit more narrow so or a little bit wider actually. Did I? I made them a little wider I think because the, in the original pattern this neckline starts like right at the shoulder and I wanted a little bit more space to try that so I made the neckline a little more narrow and then this is a modification that maybe I regret so I knit half of the neck band um with a recommended needle and then I went up a needle size for the rest of it because I figured it would lay a little bit more nicely um when it was folded that way because often you see with like a big collar that it kind of rides up the and shows like I'm trying to tell you what I mean kind of rides up like this so I knit it in a size bigger so that it would lay nicely like the the top fabric is a little bit bigger than the bottom fabric so it would lay nicely 
um, which is true, but I actually find that I end up folding this inside a little bit more, so it's kind of like a mock neck. So it almost has the reverse effect, as the way that I like to wear it is that it's too big on the inside, and so it gets a little floppy. So I'm not sure if I need to re-knit the collar or what. I mean, it's fine, it works, but um, it's not perfect. The only other thing is that I think the back panel needs to be a little bit longer than the front panel. It's not. Um, and I feel like it has a tendency to ride up my back and sit kind of high, so I may need to add a little bit of length to that. But all in all, I'm really happy with this. I wear it a lot. I really like it. The fabric is beautiful. The pattern is fun. I would make another one, honestly, in a different color, maybe like a brighter, maybe like a fun bright color for spring would be fun. Hmm. Food for thought. So I really like that pattern. Enjoyed it a lot. Knit a, um, the, oh, the other, one, the other thing is that it tells you to do a Italian bind off for these like enormously long ties, which I did not do. I refused to do that. So I just did a regular cast over, bind off in pattern and I think it looks fine. Um, so yeah, really like this a lot. Um, but definitely need it again. Next up, we have my August hat, which is a pattern by Sari Nordland. She came out, she just, she, she publishes so many good patterns. She especially has really great hats. And I'm not one to buy hat patterns, but she got me with this one. It's this really cool cabled pattern. I'd never done this kind of cable before, but it's actually super easy. And then I love this really tiny narrow cable. I just think it's gorgeous. Um, this yarn has had many lives. It used to be a cardigan. Um, and then I dyed it with avocado and then when I knit the hat with it It just was too close to my skin tone because it was kind of pale peach So I dyed over it in this kind of plummy purple and it looks really nice, but you can tell like It's not the most uniform dye job, but I do think it's really cute um, It's a little loose I find that I think I maybe should have gone down a needle size because I couldn't you can't like take out a whole pattern repeat So I think if I'd gone down a needle size it would fit a little bit. I mean it fits but it's not Snug which I think I like my hats a little more snug but all in all, I'm really happy with it. I think it's cute. It's the perfect amount of space on top of the head. It's not really slouchy because of the cables. It just kind of stands up. But I don't think it looks like a cone head. I think it's really cute. Now that I'm looking at it, it's not too dissimilar <laughs> from my mohair hat, but they're very different looks, so I don't mind that. So that's my August hat. I think it's great. Next up is my Guernsey sweater, which is from Sadness Garn. Again, the pattern. I knit this in a reclaimed 100% wool. Uh, which was used to be like an Eddie Bauer sweater for men and it had holes and stains and now it's this beautiful piece. Um, it's got all sorts of fun texture. This is very similar to the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit. Got the kind of latticing and the cables and the big two by two. I love the fit of this sweater. It's probably like 126 centimeters finished bust and I have like a 92 centimeter bust so like tons of positive ease. It's very oversized but it's so comfortable. The sleeves are really long, the cuffs are really wide, and I just really like it. Um, the only thing is that um, my pickup for the collar was not great, and you can kind of tell right here, and it bothers me. Every time I put it on, it bothers me, so I think I need to re the collar, but that won't be very difficult or take very long, um, and I think it would make me like this a lot more. So I still wear it all the time. I love it. Um, it's great for winter. I did not make any modifications to this pattern. I made the smallest size. I knit it um, basically as written. I just didn't do any... It like basically tells you to knit the sleeves as long as you want with as many repeats. And so I just finished after the braided cables and then I did the kind of welts and then did the ribbing. Actually, I did the ribbing a little bit longer than recommended because I like my ribbings to match. So it matches the bottom hem ribbing. And yeah, it's amazing. I love it. It's great. And I'm not going to knit it again because like I don't think I need more. Maybe if somebody else wanted one, I would knit it again. But... It knit, knit up pretty quick. It's like a decently loose gauge. I think it's like an 18 stitch gauge at the stockinette. So yeah, love her. She's great. All right, I knit the dumpling bag by Pearl Soho, which is in the other room, but I'll put a cutaway of it. It's adorable, super easy. Like we, I think I would knit it in 24 hours. It's like a great weekend project, great scrap yarn project. Um, the only modification was that I did Judy's Magic Cast On for the bottom so that I didn't have to Kitchener it. And so I just knit in magic loop for the first like inch and then I knit the rest of the thing, the rest of it in the round and it turned out great. And I will definitely knit more of these. I think they are so handy and would make a great gift. So love the dumpling bag from Pearl Soho. I knit mine in drop leftover drops Paris from my lavender top. And then I also knit the Sophie scarf in leftover drops Paris. Um, it's probably not the best yarn for the job. It's a little stiff. Um, I knit this larger size um 
And yeah, I think it's cute. I haven't worn it really, but it is very darling. I should wear it. It's very nautical in the blue, I think. Um, and it turned out really cute. It's very, it's another great scrap buster. It's a good gift. Um, yeah. And I don't think you need both the Sophie scarf and the Sophie shawl pattern. I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. One's just longer than the other. So if you have the, the pattern for one, you can make the other. Um, but yeah, it's very fun to knit. And I just knit the whole thing on DPNs because I don't have straight needles and it was easier than doing it on a circular. So yeah, it turned out nice. I would knit more of these. Maybe I'll knit another one. Um, I don't know. I like them. They're cute. They're fun. I think I would make it a little bit more narrow if I were to knit it again. I would just, um, I would maybe probably do the increases to like this width and then just knit it straight for a long time before I decreased again. So yeah, I think I would like it a little more if it was just a little bit more narrow. But yeah, it's great. It's fun. I know people love it. It's not the most practical, but it's fun. It's a good like on the go project. All right, my next project were my arched gusset mitts from Pearl Soho. I modified these to be fingerless. So it's a very simple pattern, very similar, I would say, to the Sophie gloves, which I know are having a moment. Um, but I just knit these in like a mysterious, I think it's a wool linen blend. Um, this is not my, I have a pretty, the other hand is prettier, just the way that the increases worked out. But I really like these very simple and then I did do some like central double decreases on the side to make it fit a little tighter around the hand and I know I just talked about these very recently but they fit great and they're perfect for winter time so I would probably knit I should probably knit another pair of these actually because they're very handy to have and they're cute I love this green I didn't think I loved this green but I do really like this green I think it's a good color for me uh, and I have some more of it so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it Maybe I'll make some socks. I don't know. That's my arched gusset mitts. I also knit the Northern Torrids hat, which I don't have with me, but I will put a cutaway picture of it. It's a beanie that is made from a free pattern on Ravel. Uh, it's a free pattern, which is in a YouTube video that I will link for you. I like the top decreases a lot. I think they're really cool, and that's why I chose this pattern out of every other beanie pattern that exists. Um, I changed the stitch count, which in retrospect was not the right thing to do. If you want to make it a little smaller, I should have just gone down a needle size. But it's a great hat. It's really cute. It's fun. It's made from a mysterious yarn from Hilles Vogue that I got at the mill. It was like a $2 ball of yarn that was like an, I think it was like an off cuts kind of a bin. And I like the yarn a lot. It's really pretty. I think it's a lamb's wool. I don't think it's a pelt's wool, although it is kind of fuzzy. Um, but it's great. And my sister's bringing it back to me because I forgot it at my parents' house and she's bringing it to me when she comes to see me soon. So I will have it back. I think I might knit it a little bit longer. I think I'm gonna pull out the decreases and knit it longer so that I can double fold the cuff because I have quite a bit of yarn left. I wanna knit it a little longer. Um, but other than that, it's great. And then my last finish, finished object of the year is the Spot Sweater by Ann Bensel, which I have a love-hate relationship with. And if you wanna hear more about it, you can watch my December Knits video, but I think that it is beautiful. It is one of the most beautiful pieces of knitwear I've ever made. It's the first time I've done all of her color work. It was extremely time consuming and I had to make some modifications to the pattern. And the thing that is the most devastating is that the fit is not great. And I don't know if I will wear this. One, because it's extremely thick. Um, it's a very heavy, like warm garment. It's made with wool and mohair and alpaca. So it's very thick and heavy. There's like not real, this is not drape. That's just the weight of the fabric. Um, and the fit and the yoke is too deep the sleeves are too narrow the neck is too high there are a lot of issues with the fit so I'm disappointed about that but I'm very proud of it as a piece um, and I need to wear it at least once it's just that it's so heavy that I'm not gonna like wear it to my office where I would overheat in it immediately so I don't know where I'm gonna wear it but I need to wear it because it's beautiful um, I'm going on like a wintry retreat in a few weeks with my girlfriends and maybe I'll bring this because it's so pretty and it would be great for some, I don't know, at the bare minimum, like some cute snow pictures or something. I need to get something good out of this because of all the time and energy I spent on it. But yeah, um, it's knit in some discontinued yarn. So this blue is like a really old yarn that I bought secondhand. I think it's from like the 60s or the 70s. Um, it's a single ply, like fingering weight Canadian yarn. I held it double. And then the white is a single strand of nature spun 100% wool sport weight held with a like fingering weight lace weight kind of wool, uh, mohair and alpaca polyamide blend which is extremely fluffy um 
But yeah, it's beautiful. I'm never going to rip it out and I don't think I'll give it away just because I'm really proud of it. It's like an heirloom piece, but I don't think it's going to get a ton of wear. It might be like a once or twice a year kind of a thing. So yeah, that is it for my 2022 knits. It was a lot of knitting, a lot of projects, a lot of things I really enjoyed, a lot of things I learned. I learned the importance of swatching. I learned the importance of choosing the right yarn for the project that you're using. I learned the importance of fixing if there's something not quite right about a project, fix it immediately. Like follow your gut and realize that it's not right instead of like not really liking it and waiting months and months to fix it. I love socks. I love knitting socks. I love wearing hand knit socks. I want to knit more socks in 2023. Um, and yeah, just like having more fun with my knits. I really enjoyed it. And I think in 2023, I want to be more intentional about the knits that I make. I want to make things that I want to wear, not just projects that I enjoy that I like knitting. Like. I'm a process knitter, so for often I, I'm looking for a pattern that's fun to knit and maybe not as much practical to wear, so I need to try and find the right balance of that in this year. But overall, I'm really happy with everything that I made this year. A lot of the stuff I wasn't planning, like if you asked me at the beginning of the year, I don't think I would have named a lot of these things, but I'm really happy with them and happy that I made them. So I'm excited to see what I knit in the new year. And so that's it for this week's video. If you have any comments or requests, leave them down below. Um, thanks again so much for watching and I will see you again very soon.